This is the Inconvenient Truth Podcast with Kala Raji, where we give you the truth, no matter how inconvenient it may be. What's good? It's your boy Kala Raji back again with another podcast. Yes, sir. It's the Inconvenient Truth Podcast, where we give you the truth, no matter how inconvenient it may be. All right, let's get straight into it. Let's talk about Super Bowl. Shout out to the Chiefs. Chief, Chief, Keith. Nobody can see. Chiefs, Chief, Keith. Nobody can beat. Chief, Chief, Chief. Yes, sir. The Chiefs won the Super Bowl. Kansas City. Kansas City. Kansas City. Yes, sir. Shout out to that boy, Mahones. You know what I mean? The quarterback. Boy, 24 years old. Probably the youngest quarterback in the history to ever win the Super Bowl, something like that. I don't know if I'm right about that, but it sounded right. So we're going to go with that. 24 years old. This boy is one year older than me. So let's talk about it. Super Bowl. How was it? I didn't watch it, but uh, according to what I've seen, it was boring. You know how I've seen people sleeping? This one dude went viral taking a nap at the Super Bowl. I saw Sway Lee sleeping at the Super Bowl. So I guess the action didn't start until like the fourth quarter, I'm hearing. Like, it was close. The 49ers were about to win, and then they came back or something in the fourth quarter. Shout out to the Chiefs, you know what I mean? They won the Super Bowl champions. They can have a parade, all of that. But what I like, let's get into it. The Super Bowl commercials. So, the planter, the baby peanut, right, is born. Because what happened is the mascot for planters died. I don't know how he died. I guess old age or whatever. But he passed away. It was a big thing on the news. CBS this morning reported on it. And... This is good marketing, very good marketing, because he died and then he was born again, or some somebody is born, another a nut, another peanut is born, and they got a Super Bowl commercial with him, with the new baby peanut, and Kool Aid Man was there, so Kool Aid Man was crying, and the water from his tears dropped on a leaf, and that birthed the little peanut baby. So I don't know <laughs> what kind of kool-aid tears was that but i don't think that peanut is actually really good if it if it was P, if the kool-aid man tears made it made it um made it grow it's like kool-aid is just sugar and water right yeah you gotta <laughs> we gotta do some experiments on that peanut see if it's okay because kool-aid water is not very nutritious <laughs> So that happened. There are a lot of commercials that was going viral. Shout out to Lil Nas X. He got his own commercial. The Jason Momoa commercial was going super viral and stuff like that because of him being skinny or whatever. You know what I mean? That went super viral. They got the Jeep commercial with Bill Mar- Bill Murray, the Groundhog Day. That was funny. I enjoyed that one. And that's about it. You know what I mean? That's basically the highlights of the Super Bowl commercials and the halftime show. So let's get into it. J-Lo, Shakira. Shakira, Shakira. My hips don't lie. You don't sound the fitness right. Attention. Shakira killed it, bro. Like, hands down, feet down, arms down, body down. She bodied it. You know what I mean? There's even a slow motion clip of her next to J-Lo shaking her what her mama gave her and she was doing it way better than she than J- Jennifer Lopez you know what I mean you know what I mean they say Jennifer Lopez is talentless shout out to Jennifer Lopez you know what I mean she's beautiful gorgeous strong she got on that pole she killed that with that hustlers inspired pole with a stripper pole she killed that Shakira went viral with her which is actually a um, uh, tradition in her country where she's from so it's not it wasn't like I see memes everywhere about her being a goat or whatever it's it's a, it's a, it's a tradition in her country that she does that that thing with her tongue 
whatever. But that's what happened. Shout out to Jennifer Lopez. Shout out to Shakira. They both killed it. You know what I mean? With the Latina vibe in Miami. Super Bowl was in Miami, so that's why. And another thing is that Zootopia predicted Shakira performing at the Super Bowl. And in the cartoon Zootopia, she wore the exact same thing that the cartoon in Zootopia in real life. It's like if you look at the movie Zootopia, Shakira is the voice of the animal and she's performing and it's this, it looks exactly the same as the Super Bowl. So, shout out to Zootopia, you know what I mean? The cartoons be predicting stuff. You gotta you gotta watch these things closely. That's why they put it in the cartoons because children don't know. The parents don't watch it. They just put it on let the kid let the kids watch it. But they be dropping hints. Hints, Simpsons, all of that, Family Guy, all of that, dropping hints in these commercials because they know the future. They got 100-year plans, you know what I mean? They know who's going to win the Super Bowl next year, 2025. So, it is what it is. This is the Inconvenient Truth Podcast. We get you the truth no matter how inconvenient it may be. That was my take on the Super Bowl. Let's get into some more interesting topics. Yikes. Okay, let's talk about it. Nicki Minaj is trending. Because she dropped a snippet. Um, I'm gonna play a little bit of the snippet for y'all. If y'all didn't hear, hear, didn't hear, didn't hear it. But yeah, Nicki Minaj is back. She back spitting. She back with that rapidy rap, rap, rap. So let's get into it. It's Nicki Minaj. They they saying the single is called Yikes because she's saying Yikes. Like the hook is Yikes, but. Let's, let's, let's listen to it. She talked about, she named Drop Rosa Parks, so we're going to get into that and my take on that. Nicki Minaj back again with her antics, so let's hear it. Alright, so sound like a the baby beat. The baby would sound fire on that. I listened to the whole thing. My opinion is like she just feels like another little Wayne, you know what I mean? I'm gonna do a little Wayne album review, but it's like what are you talking about? Like the Rosa Park line, she said and I'm not gonna say exactly what she said. This is from my memory. So she said, Rosa Parks, I'm going to have you sit down. Or you should sit down. Or something like that. Rosa Parks, sit sit in your seat. These dudes acting like Rosa Parks, I'm going to have them sit down. Okay, right. You're you're throwing shots, talking about getting people throat cut. Like, when are you going to grow up and talk about some grown woman shit? Like, at the end of the day, like, we know you can rap, right? Like, people don't challenge them. And then she got her boyfriend in the background pointing, like, what are you doing? You're in the studio for what, emotional support? You can't rap? You might as well start rapping. Like, (laughs) it's so funny to me because it's like, shout out to Nicki Minaj, you know what I mean? She a legend or whatever, but it comes a point where, like, don't you get tired of talking about the same thing? Like, what are you really talking about? Like, you got this major pa- platform, and I know you got there because of this other stuff, but they got people that, like J. Cole, that be talking about, you know, positive stuff. You know, he, he made it by by talking about explicit stuff, but he switched up his style, you know what I mean? I guess she can't switch up his style. My opinion on the snippet is boring, you know what I mean? Nicki Minaj needs to, like, reinvent herself somehow, some way. She, she's running off of these beefs with Meek Mill and Cardi B. And she's using it as momentum to drop singles or whatever. She's always going to be a legend. She's cemented a legend. She worked, you know, to get to, to where she's at. In the beginning, she was telling stories and actually, you know, rapping about something. But... When she got with Young Money, they forced her to switch her style because it, it wouldn't sell, you know what I mean? There's even Lil Wayne tested to this in his interview with Drink Champs, you know? Shout out to Drink Champs, shout out to Noriega and whatever. But she switched up her, she had to switch up her style from, you know, 
storytelling to rapping about her body, you know what I mean, and getting these body injections, you know what I mean. So it's like, yeah, Nicki Minaj could rap, but it got to a point where it got boring, you know what I mean. It's like, okay, you're saying the same thing. Not, nothing stood out to me. The Rosa Parks line stood out. But then again, it's like, don't be shouting out Rosa Parks. Like, for what? Like, I, you, you you just literally just sit in the studio and rap. You're not doing nearly as much stuff as Rosa Parks did. I, I wouldn't, if Rosa Parks was alive right now, this is why I took, I'm, I'm talking about this. Rosa Parks, I feel like Rosa Parks wouldn't allow her to say her name in a song. You know what I mean? I, I, pertaining what the song is about and what it's around, like, the, the, it's not like you're saying Rosa Parks did this. The metaphor you're using is to sit people down by violently. So it's like it's not a good metaphor. It's not a good message. Overall, it's trash. Nicki Minaj needs to go back to the to to Safari or Meek Mill or some rapper dude because or just just she can rap, but it's just <laughs> this dude she with is annoying for some reason. He just <laughs> he makes me mad. He pisses me off. Not even makes me mad, but it's like she doesn't fit with him for some reason. It's just, it doesn't it doesn't blend well. It's like he what 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 is he doing? <laughs> what is he doing? Somebody how does he make money? It feels like he's just stuck it off a of Nicki Minaj. You know what I mean? It's just it doesn't look right. It's just not right. It's Kalaraji. Inconvenient Truth Podcast. All right. So. Hello, Wayne drops an album, Funeral. <laughs> the thing about this album, right, it's like he said in an interview, don't go in it with expectations. He's going to exceed all expectations, right? I went in it with expectations, you know what I mean? First listen. Not really, but kind of. I felt like he was going to be rapid, rapid. You know what I mean? I know he was going to be rapping, rapping. I just... My expectations was, was high. You know what I mean? And I know that's not good. You know what I mean? He should probably just, just drop it as a surprise album, like Eminem. Because when you when you, he, when you announce it like that, like, I was expecting this shit to be fire, fire. Like, every track. It sounded like a, like a mixtape, honestly. It sounded like a mixtape. And from the name, I knew it was going to be, like, yeah. But he says it's an album album. It sounds like an album album from the beginning. But then when you go into the tracks, it's like, okay. <laughs> it's it's kind of too long. And, like, by track eight, you kind of get annoyed of his voice. Like, I wish he had used more features. Maybe brought in some writers. Because it's like, like I said, it sounds like a mixtape. You know what I mean? It's dope. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 5, I give it a 4. But on a scale of 1 to 10, I give it a 7. I know it's weird. I just I came up with it last night. I don't know how it makes sense, like, percentage-wise. But, like, I, I use the higher scale as a 7. 70 is passing. 4, that's still 90%. 4 out of 5. But... It's just it okay. I'm breaking it down like lyrically, beats, stuff like that. I would have to do a different rating. So lyrically, I would give it a five. Beats on a scale of one to five, I'd give it a five lyrically. As far as beats, I give it a two for beats. Um. Hooks, hooks is five. I always comes with the bad hooks, but it's just like the verses were like off. Like I was expecting some like out of the box type Wayne type. He came with that, but it was just like it wasn't over the edge. You know, it was like average. So that's what I would say. It was like average. Shout out to Wayne. You know what I mean? We should have same birthday, September twenty seventh. You know what I mean? I look at him as a brother, you know what I mean? He been through a lot. He is a GOAT, you know what I mean? He said he got 20 more albums in his back pocket, and I believe him. He's a rapper, rapper like me, you know what I mean? But 
as far as I felt like he 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 was constipated with music. He got a lot of music. Yeah, he got a lot of music, and I just I look forward to hearing it. You know what I mean? Some some good stuff, quality, like just like he probably honestly this is this is my take on it, my analyzation. He got paid taxes. Or he paid taxes, so he putting it out to get some money. You know what I mean? He was on Mass Singer. Shout out to that. This amazing promo. The number one show on television. I don't know who watches television, but it is. It's, it's there. People are obviously watching it. So, shout out to Lil Wayne. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? He's the best. You know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> He started writing when he was little. He started rapping when he was eight years old. You know what I mean? Birdman saw him, took him, got him. He signed, you know what I mean? Got into the deal. Now he's out. Now he owns everything. Young Money. Shout out to Young Money. You know what I mean? He also had um, good features. Take Off, Lil Baby, um, Lil Twist. Amazingly, surprisingly, Lil Twist come out of the closet. I don't know where he been hiding, but he got Lil Twist on the song. Shout out to Lil Twist. So you got an Australian fiance, you know what I mean? He's about in his 40s almost. He's living his life, you know what I mean? It's surprising to see he's still out here rapping, making moves on Mass Singer, stuff like that, dancing, doing the robot. He was a robot. The mask was a robot. They called the Mass Singer, but the whole body's in a costume. She called the Costume Singer. But shout out to Lil Wayne, you know what I mean? It was an album, you know what I mean, um, hopefully it does number one, you know what I mean, gotta, gotta get some promo to beat Roddy Rich. Roddy Rich taking over the streets, ooh, the box in this, but yeah, that's my take on that album, shout out to Lil Wayne, like I said, he got albums in the back pocket, you know what I mean, he's constipated with music because of his struggle with his contract and record deal, you know what I mean? So he got music to put out, you know what I mean? He put out this album. I feel like it was dated as well. The music sounded very extremely dated. He did mention some 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 mentions of like Fortnite that some some trending topics of today he mentioned like Battle Royale and stuff like that to see that he's up to date. And he also put 24 seconds of silence at the end of one song, number eight, to signify Kobe. Rest in peace to Kobe, you know what I mean? So, you know, he's also mentioned Black Mamba in one song as well. So it's not that he's, you know what I mean, in the closet, hit it up, not knowing about other artists, you know what I mean? He only listens to his music. You know what I mean? He only listens to what he last recorded. You know, shout out to that. Shout out to his work ethic and everything like that. He squashed a beef with Young Thug. But that's my take on that album. We could talk for days about Lil Wayne, you know what I mean? That was my favorite artist growing up, and it still is, you know what I mean? So I, I like the album. I like about eight songs on the album. And it's a dope album, you know what I mean? It's a project. Not many people can put out a project and have people talk about it like they're talking about Lil Wayne. Love it or hate him. Love it or hate it. He is the GOAT. Love or hate the album. It's an album. It's music. It's, you know what I mean, hooks, songs, you know what I mean, verses, flows, bars. You know what I mean? Most people can't do that. You know what I mean? Or most people have it to do that. And people that criticize him, what are you doing with your life? You know what I mean? So shout out to Lil Wayne, the best rapper alive. It's Kalaraji. Out. Peace. This is the Inconvenient Truth Podcast with Kalaraji, where we give you the truth, no matter how inconvenient it may be.